I was searching Reverb one night and I ran across a listing that made me question, is this a model we didn't know existed? Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I've got some interesting ones to share with you tonight, and we're going to start with this thing, a 1973 Gibson L6S, which is a very fascinating beast. I've documented many of them on the show, however, this one looks significantly different. It's got a lot of streakiness to it. It's got a rich, dark brown color. Being from 1973 makes this a very early production of this particular guitar. Is this a Brazilian Rosewood L6S? Because just a little bit of history here, Gibson was pretty well done using Brazilian Rosewood by the late 60s. However, there are a few special Norlin era models, such as the Gibson Crest or the Brazilian Rosewood Top Les Paul Customs, that even though they're 70s and or 80s models, they were just used from new old stock Brazilian rosewood, essentially. So when I saw this being birthed around the same time frame as those other two, and then I saw a price tag of $16.99, I was seriously thinking about pulling out that old credit card and buying this thing. But I had to stop, I had to look at all the photos. Sometimes you can't tell everything just from first glance. But right here, I saw, okay, original tailpiece, original harmonica bridge. It looks like we still have the Bill Lawrence design pickups in here. You can tell because they don't have any pole pieces. Now you gotta be careful. Nobody swapped them out with like a Tony Iommi or something. But a quick look in the back carefully so you don't break the fragile wires. We'll be able to ID them right away. And then the pick guard looks okay, but ooh. Three-way toggle switch, that's not right. So we have at least one modification here, but those knobs are looking vintage as all get out. The fretboard's looking pretty clean on this one. The headstock's not too bad either, but when I flipped it over to the backside, I had the shock of my life. BAM! <laughs> Is that a maple rosewood maple neck? It kind of reminds me of that really weird Stratocaster prototype that had an exact neck like that. But we can see these Schaller tuners are non-original. Gibson just never used that style on their three on a side headstock guitars. And you can see, okay, we've got little pilot holes right here for the original Schallers. But then we look at the back and yeah, the back is looking just as good as the front. The wood grain appears to match up pretty good. Somebody got a little bit crazy moving our strap button here and has replaced it since. So my next up here is who's selling this? Rivington Guitars. If you scroll down here, they have almost 3,000 sales. They've been in business since 2013. If this was truly a Brazilian rosewood bodied L6S, I think this guy would know. I've actually met him at some guitar shows about five years ago. He's a good guy. He sends his store employees driving the truck to all the guitar shows across the entire country and he flies in. He goes around and buys some really cool stuff. I remember he had a Heritage Award model at one of the shows. So obviously I remember a guy that has one of those. <laughs> So I read his description next. Vintage original in a stunning natural refinish. Okay. So then when you look at this photo, it's like, okay, I can definitely see how that's a straight up maple neck, but somebody has just refinished the pieces of the neck because it's a three piece maple neck with the two wings on the side and somebody has just painted the two outer stripes. Now in some areas it looks kind of crude, especially right here where you can see that the finish is worn away. That should have been your giveaway, but I wanted to believe this was something really special for my collection, right? But what I can't get over is the way that it looks like Brazilian rosewood. It's got that really cool streakiness and you don't normally find that in maple. So here's my thought. This is actually simulated wood grain that was painted on. My Leprechaun SG, check out that episode right here. That is a good example of somebody painting on wood grain. It can be done, they just have unique little rollers. So I'm curious if that is the story behind this one or is the wood grain under that really cool? Is it worth paying a premium for when it's refinished? I'll leave that up to you, but he is open to offers. And unfortunately, it's only got a gig bag too. But let's continue to get crazy. For sale by Fabio's Gear Bazaar, we've got Super Rare. Gibson Zoot Suit SG, and he wants $10,000 for it. <clears throat> okay, you see this one? And now look at my old complete collection of Zoot Suits that I wish I still had. <laughs> <laughs> Something's not quite right with this one. It looks like he's either carved it up additionally and then painted it or put like little reflective squares on it, you know, kind of like making a brick building. 
I hate to say it, but I think he ruined the zoot suit, but at least he kept like the whole designs and lines going on so you can still recognize what it was. But it looks like he's got P94 style pickups in here. And these things didn't originally come with cases, so he has one of the upgraded Gibson soft cases. But yet he left the back alone, so we know it's one of those black and natural versions. And I'm surprised he left the headstock alone. You'd think he would match this with the body since it's exposed. But yeah, that is a zoot suit that has met an unfortunate fate. But hey, it was his guitar. It looks like he actually gigged with it. Looking at it under stage lights kind of reminds me of a disco ball. Now get on that idea, Gibson. Big, shiny, sparkly disco ball guitars. Kind of reminds me of the Shakira one. I think it was a Firebird of a couple of years ago. But in these low light situations, I would say it looks better. It starts to remind me of like BFG style vibes. But is it worth $9,500? I'll let you decide, but in my opinion, that's well over three and a half times overpriced. Unless this Italian artist is really, really popular, then maybe I'd have to reevaluate, but that's outside of my expertise. But next up, we've got a Tom DeLong Signature ES333. These things are expensive. You can check up this review and demo if you need to learn more. But it would have originally looked like this. You got one humbucker. You got one control. It's a very basic guitar. Why do they sell for crazy money? It's because they're out of production and people love Tom. And aliens. But I saw this one in my searches and I was like, oh my goodness, I love it. <laughs> Somebody wanted additional controls on a Tom DeLong, and instead of ruining their investment guitar that they still wanted to play, they just decided to mount additional controls in the F-hole so they didn't have to modify it further. That is so hilarious. I love it. They just have these little washers right here. It's, it's perfect. A perfect way to modify your guitar without modifying it. And in many ways, it was probably easier to mod it that way. This one has a back plate, unlike normal 335s, but hey, this might give you ideas if you want to modify a regular 335. But then I got to this photo and it hit me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> They routed it for a neck pickup. What? Why'd you do that? You ruined it. <laughs> it had to just came down to they wanted these controls right there because it was really easy for them to get to. So it had absolutely nothing to do with not modifying the guitar because clearly they're not adverse to that. So seeing all that kind of made me chuckle and it's like, oh yeah, I got to share this with you guys. Values are all over the place on these things. Is it still worth $7,000 with a neck pickup in it now? Maybe, maybe. It just depends how many are on the market and how desperate somebody is. But check this thing out. I'm not gonna show you what it is yet. Leave your answer down in the comments. What do you think this is? A Chinese fake? A Gibson Les Paul piece? Or some sort of an unreleased Slash model? Well, it's obviously got Slash vibes because you got the zebra pickups, no pick guard going on. But then it really does look like a counterfeit from far away because they like to use this style of green finish. But no, this is actually one of those mellow out Gibson Les Paul pieces in the green finish. They just completely transformed the look of this thing by giving it the zebra pickups. And I mean, it also kind of looks like a counterfeit due to the aftermarket case here. So that didn't really help its situation at all. It certainly looks a lot better when you take it out. I'll say that for sure. But we can see the 120. 20th anniversary inlay. That's correct. This model not having fret nibs is also correct because it's a 2014 and looks like somebody has replaced the e-tune system with locking grovers. Very crooked installation job, but okay. <laughs> You've got manual tuners again. And then, hey, speaking of things that I swear I've seen before, look at this guy, the Melody Maker 90s edition. This particular seller called it the Saved by the Bell one. We talked about this one a couple of years ago. I was really happy to see this thing show back up. It's listed for 2,400 bucks. Basically, it's just one of those 65 Melody Makers. They look like this. I really love those guitars. They have a nice red aniline dye finish. Typically, you can't find some rare Pelham blue ones and other custom colors, but they're like baby SGs and they used to be really cheap, like 900 bucks to get you one. Nowadays, you're lucky to get one for about 15, generally in the two to two and a half thousand dollar range, but I still think they're nice and worth it. But a completely refinished one, all 90s out, kind of reminds me of those cool 90s cups. I've always had kind of a, a soft spot for this guitar in my heart but i'm not gonna pay you know original money for it but i would happily pick it up for like a thousand bucks but it looks like it's got some good pickups in it and an interesting custom made case and then i've got one last one for you guys tonight this is a 1982 gibson les paul studio allegedly in a green burst refinish 1983 is the first year of production of the les paul studio so when i saw it advertised as 1982 and it had a cool green finish i was thinking 
prototype. Let's check this out, my friends. And then I saw the finish and it's like, nah, probably not. That's got to be a refin. But we've got the original knobs here. We've got the three-point adjustment bridge, so that's all cool. Originally, it would have had Tim Shaw pickups, but I love that black pickguard. This is a pretty tasteful refin. They just didn't quite get the teardrop shape right in that area. But hey, would you look at that? They nailed the edges. So that's when I was starting to think, okay, maybe, maybe it is, and they just messed up. And then the back has the similar kind of crappy burst job. They did well right here. They just, once again, messed it up in this area. But then it's got it on the neck, too. The whole metallic green looks great with the black and all that. So we continue flipping through these photos. Oh, black light time probably had some sort of a heel repair and or touch up that's what that's telling me because sometimes you can get some cracking finish in this area and some people will opt to touch it up in a best case scenario but it looks like it was a pretty old refinish in general and then if we go back to this photo truss rod cover has been replaced but then we get to the back side of the headstock and we, we can't see a serial number in this particular photo so that scares me if you adjust the contrast i can't do it in recording but my editor is going to help me out here if I remember correctly, it dates to 1985, because I remember doing that and going, okay, they just had the date wrong. So kind of a cool refinish. It's available on Reverb at $1,500. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed seeing these cool, interesting guitars that I ran across in my journeys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.